All right, Shalom Rastafari. So we continue with the Halal Psalms, right? The Halal Psalm with this um, this uh, word picture right here, this example I'm um, taken from Helena Lehman's um, site and some of her work right there. It begins with 2010. Now we know that the Psalms of Ascent, and they are Psalms of Ascent, and we go into some detail on the Psalm of Ascent in the Mesmora Dawit, the Parallel Bible. So those who have a parallel Bible, the updated um, one, um, if you ordered uh, it initially, you might have to get an extra copy. If that is so, then just, you know, check with I and I, and we'll see what, what I and I can work out. But still, to all the all the rest, you need to get a copy of um, the Mesmora Dawit, right, which is the Psalm of David from the Metaf Kedus of uh, Haile Selassie the first. All right, and now in this tribulation, let's bring this up because we'll have at least, uh, hopefully a little more opportunity to go into um, to go into the hour of tribulation. Cause that was our original catch-up point um, before we had closed out previously. So let's um, open this right here. Now this is the cover to the Ficare Iesus. So now we're looking at a timeline for the tribulation. Right, a timeline. Helene Lehman has here one, uh, um, um, 210, 2010, mm -hmm. from a combination of sources like Ethiopic, Enoch, Yovastan, and, and true hermeneutic of the Bible from a Judaic. You see, if you have to remember that some of the keys in the white Western Gentile misunderstanding leads to all this boisterous racism and, 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 and adulteration of the true gospel of Christ so much so that we have um, Caesar's, you know, Caesar versus Christ or Caesar's um, Antichrist versus the true Christ or the black Messiah, you know, and if you look at the COINTELPRO program, that was another more sophisticated way to um, lynch or to kill that seed. What you have to recognize is this. You have to recognize that the devil hates black Israel. The devil hates I and I. You know, saying hates black is especially when black is Israel knows himself. This is why what Yeshua said to Petros, and we're still in chapter sixteen, right? Um, said to Petros in verse nineteen, and I will give to thee because he was able to see spiritually the keys of the kingdom of heaven, not the kingdom of God, but the kingdom of heaven. And we've been teaching that the keys of the keys is the ability to affirm and deny. It's saying, Awo and I delem. Saying, Ye, ye, or nay, nay. Now, many are still double minded, and you have to really um, watch that double mindedness and pray on that in Yeshua's name. You intend to get over double mindedness. You know, that, that middle of the road, you know, um, seeing what the other guy says before you, you check the Spirit of God and check that, check that deposit in you. And see what God's word is saying to you. You over saying what his Holy Spirit is saying to you. So they become yea and nay. And that leads to a sickness, a dis-ease called double-mindedness. And they don't treat it with the gospel, the wen gale. We treat it with the wen gale. They treat it, they treat it with they treat it with um with with pharmaceuticals. And if you look up pharma, pharmaceutical, a farmer Pharmakesis is, is, is the word in the Septuagint Greek. It means sorcery, right? So we've been seeing certain signs, haven't we? But it says that even though they've been seeing certain signs and hail coming down and fire and all these other things and earthquakes and pestilences, still they did not repent of their sorceries, of their pharmaceuticals, their pharmakesis. But they fight against the herb. You understand how... Ironic, you know, saying, but they fight against the the Kana balsam, and then they're looking for what they call the Higgs balsam, or they call it the God particle. Isn't this interesting? They're looking for the God particle, and then when we look at the word Hig, right? When we look at that word Hig from an um, Amharic, you know, saying, an, an Amharic perspective, we find that Hig, right? Hig means law. So when we talk about Torah, we talk about the law of God, we are speaking of the hug, right? The hug, right? So they fight against the what? The Kana Bosom. Let's bring this up right here. Now remember that Christ, 
right? And it's the same, um, the same chapter that we are in in Ephesians. So we're gonna go, we're gonna rightly divide the words. So we're gonna go back and forth and 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 and, and compare and contrast and explain right here, and explain and 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 deepen or heighten and enlighten the word right here. It says in Ephesians chapter five which speaks on the walk, the akahe, the halaka, of the mitmanon, of the amanya, of the one who has amen. Amen, the amen is Yeshua, right? Our imnet is what marries itself. Our subjective or, or feminine or soul faith, it marries itself to the amen, to Yeshua. That's the marriage of the Lamb. So the walk of the mitmanon as God's dear child. So when we're born again, we are children. So a lot of us in this, in this um, um, new birth or rebirth or born again process, dogmenya lidet, becoming children again, there are certain challenges on the way. And some of the brothers and sisters, you know, want to reason with I and have reason with I sometimes about certain things that they notice. You understand that goes on and 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 not being um um fully grounded in the word, you understand these things see Satan will use this guilt trip, he'll use this guilt trip, even though in Yeshua he's taken away those things because we have become new and 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 and, and all the old things are past, and we ha and we have to take the active um we have to be proactive, should I say, in mortifying the flesh mortifying spiritually those fleshy and carnal things. This is why I keep pointing to um, Romans. When I look at Romans um, chapter, chapter, um, let, let's go here to Romans for a moment. Keep, keep Ephesians, or put a marker in Ephesians for a moment. And this is on repentance. Because, see, when you have that change of mind and seeking to become the new man and to bring forth that inward conception, Satan, the devil, you understand, and, and, and those men and people who still are not unplugged from the God of this world, you understand, they're going to become obstacles, right? So when we look at the reconciliation of Christ, chapter 6, the servants of righteousness, and Yeshua is that righteousness, then we start to address the law of sin. The law of, there's, a, there's two laws that Romans talk about, the law of sin and death, and there's a law of life in our Lord, uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right? The, the, the law, which is the law of the Spirit, right? Then it speaks about the eff efficacy of divine grace, of grace. What is grace? Grace is the true gospel of Kedemawi Haila Shalasi. This is why that righteous man, man of peace, you understand, could even positively you understand, affect the hearts and minds of so many ones. People say, why is he around all these white people, all these evil people? So that's grace. No fear. That's grace. Until the, the very point, they can't even say nothing about it. They are mute on Hala Salah. They cannot say nothing. Now, now, come on, what kind of thing is this? Because they know the wrath. They know. See, some of them are going to get silly and stupid, and they're going to just bring about their own destruction, but so be it. You understand? Stay in grace. So there's the efficacy of divine grace. Then it speaks about the ground of Christian hope. What are we expecting for? Even to wit the redemption of the body. Because that's the last enemy to be destroyed. You understand? Because we learn that John has mercy on whom he will. You understand? And that salvation is open to all who admit, who trust. You understand? And that Jah has not cast off all Israel. That even though we as black folks, as lost sheep, think we've cast off, think others are running around for our name and so and won't accept us, we're not cast off before him. You understand? And we get even up to chapter 11 and 12, we read of Jah's judgments are unsearchable. So check out Romans, if you will. You understand? Romans is very... Very, it's a very, very important testimony um, in Romans for the brothers. Like, sisters, I'm, I'm going to just touch on Romans chapter eight for a moment, right? And let's bring this forward as well, right? Let's get this right here. Let's bring this forward as well, right? And what does it say? What does it say? It says right here. See, these two are one and the same, really. When you look at the tree, 
Remember, some places he, he, he was hung on a tree. Others say that was on the wood. So you see the wood and the blameless Ethiopians tell us that salvation came by way of the wood. And then in the Kedase, it speaks about Mariam and compares us to a it, a certain type of wood or a certain type of herb. You know what I'm saying? Mary in, in, in our Ethiopic liturgy. And that's a mystery that most of the, the priests don't even understand today. You know what Because they're in a state of rebellion. They need to repent and call all Ethiopians to a repentance of what was done in 1974 and 75. You understand? That's what we call the Ethiopian repentance. That brings in the new day. We may be in the time of the millennium, but it's him that holds the keys, but he's given us those keys. You have to understand. Key, what we affirm and what we deny. You know what I'm saying? And whether we are maybe, shmaybe, yay, yay, nay, nay, like, well, maybe yay and maybe nay, thinking we're being um, kind of a, a collegiate or, or like academic, like yay, you know, talking in all this roundabout Decepticon language, talking to serpent speak. You know what I'm saying? You have to be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. There is verse. Verse 1, chapter 8 of Romans, there is therefore now no condemnation. There's no condemnation from Job to those who are born again, those who accept the gospel, the good news of the King of Kings in Yeshua HaMoshiach. There is no condemnation to them which are in Christos, the anointed Yeshua, the Yeshua who is raised up with the outstretched arms. You understand? Who walk not after the flesh. Who don't walk after the flesh, after the carnal. That's why Rastafari and Truth say, I and I not want no carnal mind. I and I not want no carnal mind. You understand? To be, to be carnally minded, fleshy minded is death. But we have to understand what carnal mind means in the proper context. Because when it goes to the extreme, people go to the extremes of asceticism. You know what I'm saying? They're starving themselves and doing all the kind of you know, the crazy stuff that he does not authorize, all right? But after the spirit, so some people say, oh, spirit, spirit is an illusion. No, you, my fr you, I would say friend, but you are the illusion. The spirit is true. But there is a spirit of the Holy Spirit, and there are unclean spirits. Remember the gates of hell, these star gates, which are being opened up? both in the low-tech way, Ouija boards and sorcery and other kind of stuff, and in the higher-tech way, like the Higgs Bolsom and all these other projects that they are about. That's the reason why they don't have money for, for, your, for your child's after-school program. And they have to cut so many people off of Section 8 and everything else. You know what I'm saying? But what you're going to do is infight with each other because you're not born again. You can't see how Satan, the devil, he hates. You know what I'm saying? And more than just Israel, he hates Kedistim Gilmarium. He hates, he hates her. You understand? And therefore, by extension, he hates the black woman. You understand? And this is why when you look at how to make a slave, it's written in that way. It's, 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 uh, this was not channeled by Satan himself, you know, like the, the how to make a slave. But we see the fruit of it, so we know it's real. You understand? Verse 2, it says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Yes, you know you hear some Christians say, we're not under the law, we didn't know law, there's no law for us, they're, they're lawless. Here it's about the law of the spirit, of life. So it's qualifying that spirit, the spirit is not the spirit of death, but the spirit of life in, in Christos, the Moshiach, HaMoshiach, Yeshua, hath made me, hath made I free from the law of sin and death. You have to make this a mantra. You have to make this something that you repeat. You understand? When you feel that condemnation, that condemnatory spirit coming on the eye, and you haven't done nothing, but it's just talking about what you already did before you were born again. You know, remember you used to do this, you used to do that, and so forth and so on. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's it's the devil's psyops. You know what I'm saying? Because the only power he has is to plant his weeds, his seeds of weeds in our mind, and we water them when we be naive, when we believe in them. You understand? Mm-hmm. We water them when we say it. You know, we check our words, prune our words. We be cursing ourselves. With a lot of things, like when people say, oh, I'm just sick of that. You understand? You, you, you bring it on sickness to yourself. Think about it, word, sound, and power. 
You know what I'm saying? All this killing me. You know what I'm saying? Killing you. You know what I'm saying? Word, sound, and power. Mm -hmm. And then these people talk like, oh, I'm a grease can. I mean, a Christian. Slippery. You know what I'm saying? And they fall on the slippery slope. And they're like, why this happened? Why God let this happen to me? No. He put that power in your hands. Well, really, in the hand of your tongue. That's what it says in Proverbs. You know what I'm saying? That life and death is in the power of the tongue. But if you look it up in the Hebrew and even in the Amharic, it's the hand of the tongue. Because the hand of the tongue. This is taking it way back to the ancient Egyptian and the ancient you know, saying symbology, what some call mythology, the parables, the dark sayings. That's why most folks can't understand the parables. You know what I'm saying? Because they're dark sayings. You know what I'm saying? And they must be spiritually, you know what I'm saying, spiritually discerned. The natural man can't get it. You know what I'm saying? Won't get it. For the law of the spirit of life in Christos, Jesus, hath made me free from the law of sin and death. All you can say, the Rastafari way, for the law of the spirit or the irate of life in Christos, Jesus, hath made I and I free from the law of sin and death. You see, all the years that we've gone, we've been reinforcing the devil's programming because we didn't really understand this. That he says, I will give thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. When we become a Christian, when we are truly a follower of Christ, when we deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow him, Jehovah's in spirit and in truth, Jehovah's, we have to recognize that we've entered into the kingdom of heaven. This is why they, the worldly people think, oh, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. You're talking about all that religion, Bible stuff, you're crazy. Well, how come they don't have no peace? You know what I'm saying? And, and the true brothers and sisters, they have shalom. You know what I'm saying? Shalom in their, in their home. Not just in their house, but in their home, in their being. Because they have Yeshua HaMoshiach in their being. Don't mean that they won't go through problems, tribulation, whatever. But they can't, they're overcomers. Because greater is he who is in I and I and I than he who is in the world. You know what I'm saying? And the God of this world, and the Bible tells you the God of this world is Satan, is the devil. You know what I'm saying? That's the God. So that's what they say. Oh, one God, one God. The Bible says there's many gods and lords. But for us, there is one God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we've been given that power right here, the keys of the kingdom. They're in the hand of our tongue. You know what I'm saying? And then it was in the power of our tongue. And whatsoever thou bind on earth. Where are we? We're on earth, right? Aren't we on earth, terra firma? We're on earth? Well, it's not always very firm, but, you know, because it's shaking, rocking, rattling, and rolling. It's about to come. You know what I'm saying? But whatever we bind on earth shall be what? Bound in heaven. That means all these spiritual principalities, evil forces, demons, goblins, and goblins, and whatever they want to call themselves. You know what I'm saying? Whatever member of the family of, of, of Satan they may be. You know what I'm saying? To bind them, you understand, in Yeshua's name. Remember, Yeshua's name, we don't, we don't cast our demons really in the name of the Father. It's really in the name of the Son when we know. You understand? If we cast them out in the name of the Son. That's why they say, don't say the name of Yeshua. Don't say the name of Jesus. Don't say the name of Jesus in spirit and in truth. Don't, don't say they don't want you to talk about Christ. They don't want you to talk about God. They don't want you to talk about that. You understand? Know because they're trying to take the territory from Adam. You understand? Know they're trying to destroy Adam, you know what I'm saying? But they're focusing on black Israel. And then they're also focusing on faithful, even white Israel, too, when you think about it, as well as, as, well as faithful Christians, ones who truly believe. They might not be fully persuaded of the humanity of Yeshua HaMoshiach. In other words, they may not be fully persuaded of his, of his ethnicity, you understand? But if they, look at, if they look for the truth and don't get caught up, you know what I'm saying? Don't get caught up with the devil. Don't get caught up with Caesar Bogier. Don't be like the Israelites who said we have no king but Caesar. So John has a sense of humor, in a sense, right? You know, he laughs in heaven, Psalm 2 says. So he actually gave them what they wanted. They turned their backs on his match and his message Christ, and, and look what they're putting up. You know what I'm saying? So much so that now they also put up his sister and their, their bastard child, Rodrigo. You understand? You know, when you see the, 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 Virgo, the Virgo Mary, as we call it, right? But he says that we have that power, those keys of affirmation and denial. 
the Ephraim and Manasseh. Manasseh, Manasseh means forgetting. You know what I'm Because it's all forgotten, as Rastafari said, in the fire of forgetfulness. You know, all that's burnt up, all of our sins are. And it's interesting when you look at some of the Bingy songs. They are really, truly Christ man songs. You know, you know what I mean? But if you don't know the Bible, then you don't know the keys right there of deciphering. So you're not a workman uh, that's approved, but it need to be ashamed, you know, you know, sorrow to repentance, to having a change of mind. You understand? And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Now, when you think about that, you'll recognize why he said before that about the gates of, the gates of, of hell. You know what I'm saying? Because they've been loosing how much witchcraft stuff you see all over the place. You know, promoting witchcraft is just like everyday stuff. You understand? And you wonder why people are doing these very same things. You understand? I mean, this madness. You say, oh, um, <laughs> they're Chris. You know, they're crazy. They're Chris or whatever. You know, they're crazy. You understand? They're crazy. You understand? Because they're loosening these things. But the keys have been given to we. Let us recognize that right there. These keys have been given to we. You understand? So we have these keys. Then, he, then it says in verse 20, Then charged he his disciples. He ordered his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ, that he was the Moshiach. You understand? Well, we see what happened with that, right? He told them something specifically. I think on a certain level... Some of the Rastafari were told, I think, something similar. Because His Majesty knew that without the proper instruction, many one will go after their counterfeit way or their half-original way, their half-civilized way. They'll mix it up with these other religious denominations and, and, and the other philosophies, and they'll get mixed up. Because a lot of time, what we're instructing ones in, and, and from the Scripture, we have to actually check a lot of madness that people have learned from other ways, and, and um, you know, sometimes it's, it's difficult. But let's go on with the word. 21 says, From that time forth began Yeshua to show to his disciples, his Dek Amazamorit, how that he must go to Jerusalem. How he had to go to that epicenter, like saying, Addis Ababa. Like if I say, I have to go to Addis Ababa. And maybe I have to go to Addis Ababa. You understand, and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and scribes, and be killed and raised, be raised again the third day. You understand? Remember, Christ says early in the same chapter that flesh and blood, the very same Eucharistic, that's the Eucharist there, right? The Shigawadem, the Shigawadem, you understand? The flesh and the blood has not told him it, but the Father, Abba himself, has communicated this. You understand? Then Peter took him and began, then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. So Petros now, after he says this, Peter's like, you know, like rebuking him, like, like get uh, Adonai, don't say that. And saying, be it far from thee, Adoni, this shall not be to thee. Right? He's saying this shall not be to thee. Right? That's not going to happen. They're not going to, you know, do that. So what did, I remember I told my, my earthly, my earthly mom, she's, you know, you know, she's been in the church a while. And I said, didn't even Peter, Christ call Peter a, a devil? And she's like, no, 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 no. I was like, yeah, Christ called, Christ called Peter a devil. He said that Peter, Peter was Satan. You understand? You know, and I remember I had to actually, um, you know, I had to actually go to the scriptures Let's see if I can get one of the, the Ethiopic or Coptic uh, pictures of, um, you know, of, 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 of Peter right here. We showed it in some earlier, earlier vids, right, Peter and Paul, actually. Well, let that go on in search. But let's read this verse right here. Let's read this verse together. It says, verse 23 of chapter 16, But he turned and said to Peter, to Petros, Petros, right, Petros, right, he turned to Petros, right, and he said to get thee behind me, Satan. You see, now, Christ is not exercising the affirmation and the denial, right? Now, it's interesting because we have um, the, the Ethiopian, P okay, here we go right here. Here we go right here, right? Let's, let's um, see if we can bring this up. 
Right. Right. Okay, this is a smaller picture, but let's enlarge this a little bit. Right. That's a little too large. Let's go right here. All right. So we have Peter over here, right? This this is said to be Peter, right? Right. This is Peter, and this is said to be Paul, right? So Peter, right? Peter, he says, Petros, Petros, he says, um, he says, no, far be it. That's not going to happen to you. And Yeshua says, get thee behind me, Satan. Why would he say that? Notice, he just complimented him and say, wow, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you because the flesh and blood has not been made to be that sacrifice. You understand? That, as, as Ephesians says in Ephesians chapter 5, which I actually hold 5, it says, be therefore followers of God, right, as dear children. So shouldn't, if we say that the King of Kings is our God and Father Abba, shouldn't we be followers of him? And he speaks to us of the, the gospel, the good news of Yeshua HaMoshiach. You know what I'm saying? If we are truly those dear children, right? Verse 2, it says, and walk in love, Jah love. Don't we speak about Jah love? Walk in love as Christ as according to as Christos has also also has loved us. So the Father loves us and Christ loves us, right? And have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Right? An offering and a sacrifice. So what's that offering and what's that sacrifice? This is that offering, right, on the tree. Right? This is that sacrifice of the outstretched hands. Right? Here's the Petros and Paulos, Peter and Paul. Right? And so here it is Paul writing in Ephesians. And Ephesians is our spiritual book of Joshua. It leads us into the spiritual land to conquer the heavens. You know what I'm saying? It shows how to put on the full armor. All right? Each of the epistles are very interesting how each one of them is almost like specially designed. There's a purpose in each one of them. And as you start to grow, you begin to see these things. And you recognize the Bible is not like any so-called secular or worldly book. You understand? And the person who wrote it, if, if you say people wrote it, these people were like God, in a sense. It must have been God, because it was God. That Yeshua is the author, and he's the finisher of I and I faith. So it says right here that we are to walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for an offering, a meshwa'it, an offering, right, and a sacrifice to God for a what? A sweet-smelling savor. A sweet-smelling savor. That's why I find it so interesting in the Ethiopian liturgy, the Kedase, especially Kedase Mariam. You know what I'm saying? Um, when you uh, read the Kadase, you see where it speaks of Mary likening, likening Mary, right? Black Madonna, the Black Mother, the Black Madonna of our Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMoshiach, likening her to a type of a it. A it is a herb, right? Or some would say a tree, right? A tree, likening her to a tree. Remember Yeshua through the agency of the Holy Spirit, the gubber, the gubber of the Menses Caduce took on the flesh of Mary, right? Took on, took on Mary's Ethiopian Hebrew flesh. You know what I'm saying? It took on her flesh, took on our flesh, because he had to be born of that seed. Because not to seeds, but it's to the seed, as in singular, right? So here we see a perfect example of what we've called elsewhere the cannabis matrix, the kana the kana bolsum matrix, right? When we look at when we look at this um word art right here. Now this is offensive to a lot of so called Christians. They don't think it's offensive. Other things they're doing contrary to Christ's word, but they think this is an offense. But it may be offensive, yes, but it's not a hot yat. You understand? It's actually a grace. And that's why many of them really can't deal with this because they're not in his grace. You understand? They're not in his grace. You understand? So Christ here, according to Ephesians chapter 5, right, verse 2, right, 
he hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a what? A sweet smelling savor. For Christ's body. He wasn't burned, was he? He wasn't burned. So so why in the world would it say for a sweet smelling savor? You know what I'm For a sweet smelling savor. You know what I'm saying? And why would it say in one place that he hung on a tree and in another place it was a cross? You know, unless there is a a a um a higher or more to be to be understood. You understand? Know this is part of the mystery of God in Christ. You understand? So when we look at this particular uh, anabosa, right? Now let us understand the, the anabosa, right? The anabosa and the Higgs boson, and them looking for the God particle. You understand? Know they're looking out in the natural. You understand? Know you, you know they're looking outside of themselves. Their technology is 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 is, is outside in. Our technology and the technology of the wisdom of Yeshua HaMoshiach is inside out. That's what we call it. We say it, it's an inborn what? An inborn conception. But we have to bring that conception must be brought to its full, its full birth. You understand? Because the, the inborn conception is good, but that has to be brought to its full birth. And when it is brought to its full birth, we are the little children that Johannes um, Melikut, his epistle speaks of, and that we read of in the epistles. We are those little children. Now, there's a context to even the Anabosa that many of us um, leave off. And that's why the Cannabis Matrix talks about some of the trips, some of the trips that people have. Some people don't like smoking herb you know, or whatnot because it's like certain um, suppressed parts, certain repressed parts come out. Look a couple of verses up ahead, right, in um, Ephesians chapter 5. Go to Ephesians chapter 5, right, verse, um, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Go to verse 13. 13 is not a bad number. You know what I'm saying? 13 is actually a good number. It's a number of God. But, of course, the devil want to be like God, so the, the devil will try to use this number and keep you out so he can try to use it, you know what I'm because really it's yours. But anyway, because the 13 equals the 12 disciples, right? The 12 apostles and the one Christ in the center of it. You know what I'm 13 equals the 13 months of sunshine in that African Sion, which we know as Ethiopia, all right? Um... So here in verse um, 13 says, But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. See, Yeshua HaMoshiach, He is the true Illuminati. You know what I'm saying? He is, he is, he is the real one who is illuminated. You know what I'm saying? Satan, what most folks don't recognize, or Latin Lucifer, has lost his light. Oh yeah, sure. He, he was he was Halal Hashachar. You understand? Know we call Latin Lucifer. We find Lucifer in your Bible. Actually, it shouldn't be there if they translate the whole thing from Hebrew. Uh -huh. Which shows that they haven't been quite honest with that. They haven't been honest like Johannes with I and I on that. But be that as it may. All things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, by the illumination. For whatsoever doth make manifest, whatsoever is revealer, as we showed right here in this particular document. Let's see if we can just bring the first part, you understand, right here. So you can see this right here, the Kashate Burhan. You can go to I and I, you know, I and I um, um, study page, lojsociety.org, the Kashate. Kashata or Kasata, the Kasata, some say, the really Kashata or, or, or Kasata, 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 it's, a, it's syllabated. The Nagusu said, like, well, right? Not like, but more like a, you know, it's almost like lispy on a certain level. The Kashata Burhan, no, bur, Burhan, bur, 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 Burhan, right? The Kashata Burhan. Who is the king of kings? Do you see right here where it says revealer of the light? The revealer of the light? And that was one of the newspapers during the Adi Zemin, the Adis Zemin of Nagusa Neges. Now, if you look over here, 
it says 63, you know what I'm saying, it says 63 um, AB right here, right? It's kind of worn out a little bit. I want you to keep that in mind. AB means the Ameta Bejwa, right, or the year of the Redeemer. Sends that acceptable year of the Lord. And what is that acceptable year of the Lord? November 2nd, 1930. 1930 is that acceptable year of the Lord. Because when we calculate this properly according to the sayings and the words of Yeshua, we, we get a better idea about how close we are as we enter into this particular time. Because it says that the hour of tribulation, remember that hour of tribulation. Now, if a day with the Lord is as a thousand years with the Lord, then what is an hour, because all this is coming from the Lord's perspective, Revelation, what is an hour like with him? It all depends on how many hours are in a day. Some say 24, because they're following a, a white Western Gentile misunderstanding. But if we look at it from its, from its, um, its biblical roots, we find that there are 12 hours in a day, right? 12 hours in, in a day. And if we look up that particular verse, let's see if we can get that verse for you, the 12 hours in a day verse, right, the 12 hours. Remember when Christ says that there are 12 hours in a day? And so 12 hours in a day, um, we find that in, uh, let's see, sat down with the 12, um, let's see, that is in John 11 and 9. That's 119, not 911. Let's go English style, 119. So the 119 is 12 hours in a day. You understand? So are there not 12 hours in a day? You understand? Is what Christ says in 11 and 9. You understand? So let's bring that. Let's, let's take this off right here. Let's bring that up here too. Um, let's go to Johannes. Yeah, Johannes Wengiel. Right, Johannes Wengiel. So we just dealt with um, the sweet uh, savor and the sacrifice likened to the herb. All right. So we're going to move forward in the next part. Let's take a brief, um, a brief uh, pause for the cause and get set up with the other part of this particular lecture. So shalom, Rastafari, stay tuned. <laughs> 